Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and that was solo number four from the Rick Latham book, Advanced Funk Studies. So in my opinion, this is the most difficult solo in the entire book. There's lots of uh, kind of funky coordination things that you have to master before you can play it, and the written tempo, which is 132, is extremely fast. So I would suggest uh, practicing this solo slowly and in pieces. Uh, and then put it all together into that. Now there you saw me play it mostly true to what's written. I did change a few fills and added a few things here and there. And if you've been watching my previous solos in this series, you see that I like to do that. And I also like to have my students do that as well. Now this is in the style of Steve Gadd, obviously. If you listen to uh, lots of different recordings from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and even if you see him recently, he loves that kind of uh, Americanized samba pattern, which is that straight bass drum. So he's been doing that for a long, long time. If you go back and listen to uh, like the Chick Corea record Friends, I mentioned that in the last video. There's a great tune on there called Samba Song. It's really great drumming, great great playing by everybody on the record. There's Chick Corea, Eddie Gomez, Joe Farrell, who was an incredible reeds player, and uh, Steve Gadd. So uh, that tune is full of all kinds of great drumming, and that last tune, Samba Song, is to one where he's doing a lot of that kind of samba stuff and plays a great solo on that as well. Even Steely Dan's Asia, if you listen to the end of that solo, where it's fading out, you hear a lot, a lot of this kind of stuff. Uh, another great record, if you're interested, is, a, is by Steps. It's called Smoking in the Pit. Uh, there's a tune called Not Ethiopia on there. And again, kind of a samba solo, and he plays, um, you know, it's very long, actually. It's, it's at least two minutes long. And it's a whole drum solo, and he does a lot of this stuff. So there's lots of stuff out there you can study to get the, the feel. Now this isn't an authentic samba feel where you have the bass drum, you know, accenting the certo pattern, which is this. Here you have it more straight ahead. So you have that um, bass drum instead of accenting, you know, on the drop, but doom, but doom. You have it on all four like this. Now you'll also see that I'm using that pivot foot to play that. And I recommend you do that too. So you could play the fast tempo. So let's talk about the components to this solo. Uh, I divide it up when I teach it into eight separate sections. In other words, eight separate grooves. So you have this first groove, which is fairly easy. You're just doing this. Now make sure you don't open your hi-hat too much on that. Keep your foot kind of closed and use your hand on the shaft, uh, the stick in other words, to activate that open. Okay, so that's pretty simple. And then you have the fill. Now that fill, second line, first bar, should be kind of stretched, tripletized. So. so it's that kind of feel. So I'll just play the first uh, five bars. So I had some open hi-hats there, but you see the, the kind of tripletized fills. And that should go for the whole solo. So don't play them too straight, all right? And then you get into this um, uh, groove where we talked about it in uh, solo number three, where we're doing multi-surface riding. So that's what I would practice first. Just no snare drum, just hi-hat and uh, cymbal, okay, on the upbeats. And then add your snare drum 
and then your toms. So. Now this is virtually identical to that same groove in solo three, but now we have that bass drum playing this, this samba pattern. All right, and then the next groove is, is a little bit more difficult. That's groove three. That starts on the last measure of line three. And get that same thing going, but now we're offsetting that snare drum, so. The way it's repeated, you could uh, interpret that as having a cymbal crash on the beginning of each bar, but I wouldn't do that. That doesn't sound good to me, having a cymbal crash on one of every bar. So after the first bar that, I just leave the cymbal out and play three notes on the hi-hat, like this. All right, now these fills here, they're all all the notes are accented, but that could easily sound too rock and roll, so you can ghost a few of them. I would suggest doing that. Now the next groove uh, starts on line five, and that's kind of a linear thing with the cowbell. I'm using a small cha-cha bell for that. It's mounted uh, on my bass drum. Okay, you can get those clamps. Uh, LP makes them anywhere to do that, and it makes it really handy. I would use a small bell. If you use a bigger bell, it's going to get in the way. So I would practice this groove slowly. Again, it's linear, so it's all separated. And when it's fast, Okay, so that's, that's the feeling of that. It's hard to get that even, so you want to practice that a lot. So uh, I would suggest when you're at tempo for that, to memorize it. I'm reading it there, but again, just like we talked about in solo three with the bell, that cowbell is not a big target, so you want to not, you know, have to look away. So that's that uh, rhythm. Now the next rhythm uh, is kind of a batucada. Batucada is the whole uh, samba ensemble. Like if you listen to carnival music, you hear. So that's very, very powerful. So there, uh, you can play closed hi-hat uh, on the offbeats or open hi-hat like this. So. So these toms represent the two sordos, usually there's three, but that's the high one and the low one for here. It's like kind of a little bit of a melody in there. All right, and then the next part is what I call a disco samba, which Gad uses a lot, and that sounds like this. So uh, that's a really fun thing to play. And you can also open the hi-hat. And that's why it's called a disco samba, because you have the emphasis just like disco. On that open hi-hat. And then we have finally the bell part, where I do go to the bell here, and it's just kind of a paradiddle displaced thing, so. So you can improvise a little there if you want, mix it up. And then finally we have the big batucata rhythm at the end. This is uh, the last line of the first page. And this one's a little tricky. So uh, you need uh, three toms to play this. If you just have two, you can play uh, 
the second one on the high tom, which is fine. So let me play that for you slowly. Now you want to kind of ghost that snare drum for the most part, uh, except where the, uh, the accents are. So let's do that quicker now. And you also notice I'm putting the hi-hat on two and four, and now I'll splash it. So it sounds like this. So not too bad. And then finally, we have the disco samba. And at the end, I do do kind of the rock and roll. To sort of end it <laughs> with a big ending. So this kind of solo, like again, is in components. And that's the way you want to practice it, because the transitions from one groove to the other are what's going to be most difficult. So I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time with solo number five. Thanks. <laughs>